Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rebuilding Stockport, where we're starting off on everybody's favourite screen, the finances. I know that when someone says, let's look at the finances, you just you just start salivating. But actually, before we do get into that, since it is the start of the week, it is time to thank new Patreons. And this week, it is Stefanos Messios, which is a fantastic name, by the way, Jamie Clayton, and Reese Williams, who, yeah, you've also got brilliant names. Why the hell not? But no, seriously, thank you so much, guys. That's really, really awesome to all of you over there as well, and just everyone that's been watching this series. We're sort of in a little bit of a resurgence lately which is really really nice um i'm just having a bloody blast making this at the moment you have no idea so since i said we were going to take a look at the finances that's exactly what we're going to damn do um so we've got nearly 800 grand in the bank at the moment now someone said to me at the start of the year that we could get up to around about a million is where they got to for the end of the season i thought that sounds delightful i would love a million pounds right now but i just had a little cheeky glance over our projections and 2.27 million now i don't think we're going to reach that because it's february or february february already and i don't know where that money's going to come from unless someone's about to inherit something from their grandma that that's all i can think of has darren stevenson got a grandma we don't know about but either way i am pumped random fact connor de mayo likes ketchup not mayo i don't believe you that it can't be true i said believable rumors come on nolan bow wears platform football boots pass it on you see that's the sort of stuff i'm talking about that i can believe particularly as apparently he genuinely is six foot one and the game has him as six foot seven someone reckons he's wearing stilettos they might not be wrong I think this is the first time I've ever seen the AI use a strikerless system before. Right, okay, so, on the topic of that, because I genuinely thought that some of you might not believe me when I said that Spennymore played a strikerless system, I want to try and find the tactic and show you what they did. Right, so these were the lineups from the game, and there it is, loud and clear, a 4 2 3 one, zero DM formation. This is the system that Spennymore Town played against us earlier this season. So they had a back four, two DMs in front of that, a central midfielder, two wingers, not attacking wingers, wingers, and one of them, I believe this guy on the right, Ramshaw, who someone actually told me is really decent, uh, was set to defensive winger, I think. And then they had this guy, A. Johnson, uh, can't be the same guy, I hope, um, playing as an attacking midfielder but i think he was like he looked like he had a supporting role um to be fair we we didn't get a result against them so that's bad on me isn't it but it is really strange seeing the ai play sort of strikerless and weird systems now it might have been out of necessity because of injuries i don't know but like seriously when you see the ai trying to play these weird unorthodox systems it's like watching it's like being david attenborough watching the orangutans play with tools and now we watch as the ai tries to play a segunda volante in the midfield Oh yes, he's moved to inverted wingbacks. Very good. If you pay very close attention, you can hear the mating call of the libero in the wind. So straight off the back of the Leamington game, we travelled travelled to our home stadium uh, to play against York City, and the performances are just mwah at the moment. Seriously, I can't imagine how... I don't really understand how one tiny tactical change for one particular player has made all the difference, but it seems to have. That's the only real change I made, and... It's just made Darren Stevenson even better. Scored again in this one, along with Conor DeMeo and a Nolan Bow penalty. Yes, York had a red card, but we'd scored three goals before that point. It probably could have been more. Um, absolutely superb performance. We then played Billericay Town away from home in the FA Trophy, and I thought we were going to lose this game, but oh no. We were absolutely superb there. Dominated the match. Uh, well, let's see who got the goals. Scott Duxbury got the goal. Marching band man Scott Duxbury with a goal. Luke Guthridge got a free kick, and then Darren Stevenson, obviously, had to get a goal. They did get one back uh, in between all that, but it wasn't enough, and we managed to progress to the next round. We then had a little rematch against the team we played on the opening day of the season. A 3-1 victory away at FC United of Manchester. Jack Payne... Ah, show you him in a minute, our new signing, and oh boy, you're going to like this one. But he gave us the lead literally a minute and a half into his debut for the club. Enrico Souza scored, and Scott Duxbury again. It's insane. And we've got a very good chant coming up for him later on. Do not worry about that. Uh, they did then get one back annoyingly. We have a habit of conceding late goals. I think it's possibly complacency sets in when you're 3-1 up. Someone breaks the offside trap. Bam basically. But it doesn't matter. 3-1 win. The wins just kept coming. Which is why in the next game, it was very annoying when the wins stopped coming. Uh, Conor DeMeo had an absolute DeMero uh, in this game. He was very, very poor. Created a chance. Um, I think he actually missed a... I don't know why he got such a low rating in this game. He just wasn't very good. Uh, we should have done better in this match. We had some chances. We were definitely the better side. But Southport came here and they won 1-0 and there's nothing we could do about it other than play better. Thankfully, the one thing you need after you lose a home game for the first time in... Oh, since the Ultraman game, I guess, is a game away at the bottom club who are are struggling like mad that being said they did take a point of us earlier this year wasn't going to happen this time tim schmoll scored a goal nolan bow scored two goals and darren stevenson scored a goal because of course he did is darren stevenson a 4-1-1 keeps our run of good results in a row apart from the southport one going 
what's that you say? More games? Yeah, there was more. I ended up having to play seven off camera for this one. We then had Hartlepool in the FA Trophy, having got them against uh, from the Villariki game. We actually led in this one through Darren Stevenson, but Andrew Davis and Michael Woods uh, saw the, the National League side eventually overrule us. But frankly, we, we held our own in this game, and on another day, could have won. It was basically like the Maidstone game all over again. And finally, we had Telford United at home, and a 3-1 win. Connor DeMeo, Nolan Bow, and Enrico Souza's goals dominating victory yet again a great performance all round and uh yeah we're in a good position and all of that has left us now five points clear at the top of the league but we've won so many games lately and at one point we were still only two points clear of Blythe Spartans they were flying up after us you can see that there's a bit of a gap emerging now uh but at one point there was a much bigger gap actually Brankliff started to close it again but our goal difference is now vastly superior to the other teams in this league and I think we've just started to crack it a little bit to find a way uh to really make this league our own still only three defeats this season and a couple of those were completely avoidable uh altering we played all right Southport was bad though Kidderminster's the only one that we really were were bad enough to lose it in all honesty but it doesn't matter because we lost stevenson 22 goals in the league this year what a man and as a result of that he did win player of the month and i won manager of the month for the second time this season which is about time the club have also agreed to up our junior coaching budget too which should go nicely for the youngsters i am going to show you ashley conway and the other lad that we've got but i'll show you those in the next episode because this one's been a bit tightly packed because there's been so many off camera games which means we're going to get a five all draw in today's match and this episode will be 30 minutes long so the player i signed he was a free agent this is jack payne i I might have mentioned him in the last video. I actually don't know. I recorded that on Friday. I've been away all weekend and I came back and I was expecting, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting from the comment section, but it was brilliant. Um, the rumors, the chants, all that stuff. Oh, great. I love reading it. I really did. But yes, this is Jack Payne. So he is basically the new deep line playmaker. I got him because he suits that role perfectly and he's got very good stats. He's better than Elliot Osborne was anyway. And also, can you think why I might have signed him? 16 long throws. Oh boy. And, um, yeah, it is exactly as good as you'd think it might be. That is just a really good player. In four appearances in the league, he's got one goal and four assists already. And I think that might have equaled what Osborne got for us so far. So I'm genuinely ecstatic with this signing. I know it's £550 a week, but I could not turn him down, which makes me regret the whole Luke Gutrich thing. And But ah, you, you take the rough with the smooth. Jack Payne, he's already worth £56,000. We got him for free. I mean, who let this go? Ebbsfleet United, you absolute weapons. So today is a game that a lot of you are which is a strange one. Boston United, I know they used to be a League Two side, and my uh, aunt and uncle actually live in Boston. And they seem to have quite a large following, which is really cool for a team that dropped quite a long way down, because I believe they were owned by Americans at one point. That's not true, is it? That's just because they're called Boston, Matt. Shut up. But the point is, a lot of you wanted to see this game, so that's what we're going to do. Boston have kind of flitted around the league. At one point, they're in the playoffs nearly, I think, and now they're sort of back into mid-table. So this should be a similar kind of opposition quality to Levington and FC United. Hopefully, we can come here and get the result if we just keep on motoring on. But uh, yeah, we just have to get this over the line now. We've got, what, 11 games left, a five-point gap, just a few more wins to keep us going. We're 20 points clear of the playoffs. That should be wrapped up soon as well. And frankly, because we've actually had some nice time off, we can pretty much go with the normal team that I would like of Mbo, Stevenson, Souza, Payne, DeMeo, and Butterfield in the middle. Partnership still building here. Duxbury, Palmer, and Schmoll at the back. Those two have performed all right lately. Uh, Palmer, keep, I've been rotating around a little bit. Hinchcliffe, and of course, Kebby. On the bench, we're going to go with Ormson, Widowson, who's not played that much lately because Duxbury's been so good. And also, we've had less games. Warburton, of course, Bell, and Jordan Keane to give us some options. Now, with the fact that we've actually got a long throw specialist now, I might need to move around the throwing instructions again to put Mbo back where he was because now we actually can reach him with the throws. But we'll, we'll leave it to this for now and just see how it goes. We've already scored once from one. Okay, then. Um, We come here, we hopefully dominate the game and hopefully get ourselves a goal or two. That's the plan. Anyway, DeMeo... And already nearly getting in there. Brilliant stuff. A corner early doors. Well, one. Payne can make... He's got a hell of a pass on him, too. That is not a good example of it, but he can do it, I promise. Abbott. Rollins. It's passes it from this particular spot where I found we've struggled a little bit. Johnson's in. What a save. Hinchcliffe really has improved this year. That one error, sure. But he's made some good stops. Payne will surely pick out Duxbury now. We need a good cross with that left foot, mate. Goes to the edge of the box for Payne. DeMeo. Long shot coming in. Saved by Wills. The pressure's mounting already. Possession's looking up. And Bo, or oh, can he get in behind? Souza's out there. And Bo whips it across. Stevenson headed on target. Out wide for Darren Stevenson. For Duxbury again. He's having a field time down here as always. Ball in and Bo! Saved by Viss or Wills, rather. Why would I think that? Davies ball in. Back post. Oh, it's open and it's in the back of the net. Ryan Qualter with the goal. God. We've started this game all right, but just not fashioned enough chances for my liking. The possession's there. The creativity is certainly looking all right, but good ball in from a set piece. Oh, my Lord. Well, we did not defend that well, did we? We left about three players unmarked at the back post. Need to look at that one, perhaps. Hmm. Underwhelming sort of first half so far. 
More shots, more possession, the usual stuff, but just not quite the cutting edge that we're used to. Souza. Back post again. DeMeo. Brought down. Oh, and Butterfield pings it wide. A few too many long shots for my liking. Here we go. Payne whips it in. Knocked down. Souza. Goes. Oh, what on earth? Stevenson. Oh, DeMeo. Wow. It's a half time. We trail 1 0. Um. We've, we've got a lot of the ball. We're creating shots, but they're from range from too much. So I might turn on work ball into the box for the second half, particularly as we've got a lot of possession, just to try and break them down. I, I think we need to come and try and win this second half. And really, a, a point wouldn't be the worst result in the world. Um, I don't know. Actually, we have to have a look at the league, too. Okay, everybody's fired up. That's nice. We are going to work that ball into the box a little bit more for this second period, though. Jack Payne's in danger of losing discipline. We've got to be careful with that. Kebby's ball in. Oh, that's a weird one. Butterfield knocks it down. Oh, needs to get in the box, really. This is not what we want in pain. Stevenson. Yes, not the best pass for Duxbury, but can he get the cross in? Souza? Oh my god, how has that stayed out there? Butterfield knocks it down. Mbo, options. One of them is Souza. Need a back post cross now. Oh, and DeMeo blocked. As bad as this sounds, I'm actually thinking about getting... Oh, we can't really. We've got no options for that. I could have brought... Because he's not... Like, he looks like he might get sent off more than anything. I'm thinking Warburton on for Souza, even though he's playing all right, just to give us a different option. And... Maybe even Jordan Keane on for Butterfield. This is quickly becoming one of those what more can we do kind of situations. I might even push it to very attacking for the final 15 minutes here. Um, we've done everything right from a creative standpoint. Just just can't get the finish. Any other day, we're probably winning this match. But that's just how it goes sometimes. And Bo, Duxbury, can he find the cross? Pulls it back. Payne. Oh, saved by the goalkeeper again. Duxbury. And Bo. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, saved by Hinchcliffe, bailing us out there. Maybe the final stub should just be to get Bell on for him, Bo. So we can have someone to run in behind if we need to. Warburton, Keane, DeMeo, Payne looking across the pitch for Stevenson. Bell's still got that height in the box if we need it. Stevenson's all the way through here. Blocked. Oh, dear. Duxbury again. Oh, he's hit the post. Jordan Keane, offside. No. Cow by Duxbury. DeMeo. Finds Darren Stevenson this time. Ball across for Warburton. We need a good cross now, son. Ball in. Ah, uh, DeMeo, Keen. we've literally got seconds to go, Payne, even if we rescue a point, that would be a good one, Duxbury, that's going to be it, it isn't it, Payne, across for Kebby, we need a good cross now, back post, Steven saw, he's over the bar, what a chance that was, I think that's going to do it, I think we're going to lose 1-0 away at Boston United, ah, uh, that is gonna, that's unfortunate. We've played really well in places in this game and done pretty much what we've done in all the other games. Just played well, created chances, just could not take them today. Just was not our day. Sometimes that just happens, you know? That's just one of those things. It's similar to the Southport game, except we actually played better and the other team played worse. But sometimes you just got to take your chances. We didn't do that. Boston did. Getting tired at the top again. It's amazing that we could have gone on the run that we did and the amount of wins that we got and still only find ourselves two points clear at the top of this league. It's going to be tough. Obviously, the other teams have still got tough games to play. But, you know, Darlington won 2-0 away at Telford. They're not that bad. Oh, they've slipped again. And um, Blythe Spartan beat Kidderminster Harriers. So they've had some easier games. They're going to have tougher matches. But still, they're looking. They're coming for us. We're going to have to really be good for the rest of this season to stay out on top, I've got to say. This is getting tight now. It really is. Because we've basically got two episodes left in this season. And in the next episode, it's going to be... Um, oh, like I want to do that, but that's a lot to have loads of games and two live comms in one video because I would love to do Darlington and Blythe. Maybe we could make it through. I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do because I do want to play both those games and I don't want to like shortchange you. We're going to do Darlington as a single live com in the next episode so you get to see that. Then we'll go away and do the Hereford game off camera and then we'll come back after that and do Blythe and Chorley as a double live com in the next episode after that because I, I really want to show you both the big games against Darlington and Blythe Spartans because they're, they're so important for us at the moment and I want to make sure that you guys get to watch them as well. And then after that, we'll come back and do... We might as well do a double live come on the final day of the season as well with Curzon, Ashton, and Nuneaton Town because that could be huge for us. So, yeah, lots of double live comms coming up. So if you have enjoyed this episode, and I hope you have despite uh, the sort of patchy form as of late, still lots of wins in there, and the results that we've had defeats are a little bit unlucky, I think. Um, then drop a like on the video. That would be smashing. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button for more videos in your inbox every single day. And I will join you guys in the next episode for the home match against Darlington, the crunch match, which, hey, for all we know, this could be the them trying to get above us in that game. I mean... It could easily be the case. We need to get some wins against Spennymore and Ashton and Chester particularly. Those ones have to be wins for now. Anyway, I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.